A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Instead of the channel dying from irrelevancy, I decided to only cover useless geometry problems from now on. It's better than getting no views at all and it seems to be working for other totally garbage maths channels, so I might as well do the same. On a serious note though, haven't covered any problem by Katriona Ark in a while, so here it goes. You should follow her on X Twitter. She's posting some great geometry puzzles and I still had this one from I think 2020 still lying around. It's a cool problem. What we want to do is here's the original post uh, from Twitter. We want to find the area of all those three squares combined. And instead of saying that this right here is 5, I'm just going to terrorize the problem a title a bit more and say this right here is just the diameter of the circle D. And yeah, now we're going to dive right in. Keep watching the video for the solution or post your solution down there in the comments below what you got out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label a few sides because if we want to get the area of a square, what we want to have is a, at least one side length respectively because all the side lengths are the same. So this right here is A, I'm going to call this B, and this right here is C. And I already placed A very smartly, <laughs> because if we take a look at A, it's comprised of B and C together. If we add B to C, we are going to get A out. So A is the same as B plus C. And this is nice, we can make use of this fact later. So if I um, put the construction here once again, then we have B plus C here. We have B here and we have C up here. Now, there's a circle in here, on purpose obviously. You can do it without the circle solving this problem, but with the circle it's a tiny little bit easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of the Satz von Thales. Um, it's Thales theorem and what it states is that if you put a diameter inside of a circle and then you choose any random arbitrary point on the outer arc of the circle and then you connect the ends of the diameter with set point, you are always going to get a right triangle out. So this right here, for example, would be a right triangle. And where would be a great place to put a right triangle here? Obviously at this spot because by coincidence, the circle is intersecting with exactly the corner of the square up here. So if you put the dot here and connect all of this, we are going to end up with a right triangle inside of here. I'm going to put the sketch down here once again, just to get a better overview. So this right here is the diameter D and the diameter D is comprised of B plus B plus C, which is the same as 2B plus C. So this right here is 2B plus C. That's the right triangle. And what can we do with this construction right here? Now, what we can do is we can see that if we put a height into this very right triangle, the height is going to be equal to the side length of the second square, the middle square B. So putting a height in here is gonna yield once again B. And now the last thing we are going to do, and then we are basically already done, is we are going to take a look at similar triangles. This is in fact an application of Euclid's Höhensatz. So this is the height theorem by Euclid. Um, I don't know if it's called that in English too, but hear me out. It's very easy to see that if we put a height in here, we are going to divide this up into two similar triangles. We get this one right here and this one right here. And this is both B. How are they similar? So if we have, for example, an angle alpha here, this right here is going to be 90 degrees. So we get an angle beta up here. Now, if we take a look at this triangle, we are going to get that alpha plus beta must be equal to 90 degrees because the other angle right here is already 90 degrees. Now, inside of our original triangle that we got up here, we have alpha here. We also have a right angle up here meaning by this construction here, this right here must be beta two. So this angle up here is gonna be 90 degrees in total. 
that we have up here at 90 degrees is the same as alpha plus beta. So this angle must be alpha and this one right here must be beta once again. So those two triangles are similar and in similar triangles we can compare for example the shorter side length to the longer side length for example comparing the two feet um, inside of those right triangles. Now what we just need are those side lengths that we got down here. Now the total side length is the diameter which is d but we can break this up a tiny bit more. Take a look at this sketch that we get right here. I'm going to erase a bit of stuff. Now if you put the height in here you're going to notice that this little part down here is going to be C once again. This right here is B plus C. Meaning this side length that we get down here is going to be the same as B plus C plus C which is the same as B plus 2C. Now all that's really left is this little part right here and this is exactly the side length B minus this part which is used by this longer side length which is c. So this right here is b minus c. And now we can start comparing the for example um, shorter side length in the right triangles with the longer side length. So if we have um, this connection b divided by b plus 2c this ratio is going to be the same as now b is our shorter side here so what we are going to do is, um, no, it's the longer side. If we take a look at this sketch right here. Now this was um, shorter divided by longer is the same as shorter divided by longer. So B minus C divided by B. And now we can start solving this equation a tiny little bit. Multiplying both sides by B, it's not equal to zero. It's a positive side length and multiplying both sides by this part. Both are positive, they can cancel out. We are going to arrive at Euclid's height theorem for right triangles which is the height squared is equal to b plus 2c times b minus c. So this is just a fun little effect. Um, if you have this height inside of a right triangle and this right here is um, p for example and this is q then what you get from this theorem is exactly that the height squared this is what we got right here is equal to p times q. This just follows from this relationship in similar triangles. Now we can start multiplying everything out. We are going to get that b squared is equal to this part is going to yield b squared and then minus bc. Then we have plus 2bc and minus 2c squared. Now b squared is going to cancel out on both sides giving us overall that we have 2bc minus bc is going to be just bc minus 2c squared is equal to zero. c is a positive side length so we can cancel it out on both sides is that equal to zero giving us the relationship overall that b must be equal to 2c. So taking a look at our sketch now we are going to notice that b is the same as 2c and since b is equal to 2c this less one must be 3c. Now we can get ourselves the area of those three squares combined. Namely the area is gonna be, we have the first one which is c squared plus 2c squared plus 3c squared. Those all squares, putting it in parentheses and now if we just multiply everything out we are going to get c squared as a common factor times and we get one, this is four, so five in total plus three squared which is nine gives us 14. So the area of those three combined is going to be c squared times 14 and if we take a look at our original problem where our diameter must be equal to 5, this totally equal to 5, then we get 2c plus 3c is equal to 5 meaning this only holds for c being equal to 1 obviously because this is 5c combined C, uh, hence c must be equal to 1. So if we'd like c equal to 1 and here we get the total area to be 14 um, area units. But we can generalize this even more by taking any random arbitrary diameter. And I hope you did enjoy what we have seen today. And if you did, why not check out the contents of today's sponsor Pray into a kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. I do like geometry problems like those. They are a little bit thought provoking and you can try to use a few theorems and just standard stuff to solve them. I'm a sucker for analytic geometry but elementary geometry has its nice sides too. 
and I invite you to check out the geometry courses over on Prehen today too, because they provide you with some of the best online learning content that you can find out there on the internet. The whole landscape of Prehen at that. So it's really not only geometry that they have over there. They have everything, ranging from calculus to general relativity and maybe also chemical reactions. Check it out. If you are striving to learn something new in the STEM field on a daily basis, then Preant is definitely the perfect fit for you. And the best thing about their courses are their extremely brilliant, pun intended, <laughs> visualizations that you can use to get a better understanding of the problem at hand. Their visualizations are highly interactive, meaning if you have, for example, this generalized version that we got right here, you can vary, for example, if they have something like that in, in stock the side lengths of those three squares combined and see how the area is going to turn out in a numerical way, for example. They have it all over the place, doesn't matter if it's in calculus or maybe easy geometry theorems like the interior angle formula for triangles in general, summing up to 180 degrees. I invite you to just check it out for yourself and see if it's something for you. I highly recommend it. Use my link at the top of the description, print.org slash maths or the QR code somewhere up here. With it, you are going to get a 30 day free trial of Awesomeness. Try the whole landscape of print for completely free. And if it feels like it's something for you, then definitely make sure to make completely use of the link and the first 20 people to do so get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is an amazing deal. They are ending so much content on a regular basis and they are trying to even improve their older courses regularly. It's such a great deal. You should just try it out and see if you can enhance your STEM knowledge by a big margin. Trust me, you are going to do so. It's an amazing service and I just love what they provide to the STEM community. So check it out and support the channel this way. And this basically concludes today's video. I wish you guys a fabulous day and don't forget to support the channel on Patreon too if you feel like I deserve it. See ya.